When there is an injustice against you or someone you love or someone you believe in, stand up. Don't sit down on them you know, if they need you. Welcome to Popcorn Planet's Pop Culture Justice. I am Andy Signor, and we have some new appeal news regarding the Depp Heard trial, and I'm so happy because we got Christopher Melcher back again to help us break down the legal breakdown on these filings. Christopher, welcome back. How are you doing, sir? Pretty good, Andy. It's the case that never never goes away. But uh, This yeah, is the case that never ends. Right. Uh, well, I see you're traveling. Thanks for making time for us here as we uh, break this breaking news down. I guess this dropped last night. I saw Andrea Burkhart put out these uh, designation of assignments of error for appeal. Now, we, they're, they're short documents, but correct me if I'm wrong, we'll get the full appeal soon. But these basically lay out the errors that each party uh, saw or is it basically going to be appealing about, correct? That, that's right. So there, there are stages to an appeal. The first uh, stage was saying, hey, I am going to appeal. That happened uh, a bit ago. And then now in this stage, uh, at least under Virginia law, they're required to uh, state their, their grounds in, in very summary form. And so there's no argument uh, around it. It's just identifying the alleged errors by the trial judge um, or jury in uh, rendering the, the decision. Now, both sides are appealing, so both sides have their own assignments of error. Johnny's, uh, you know, had a $2 million judgment against him that he's saying that there were some errors about that that we'll talk about. And then, of course, Amber, you know, believes that there was errors made uh, in the entry of judgment against her, so that's her document. All right, so I want to break down both documents. We're going to go break them down with you guys. And thanks again to Andrea for putting these out uh, so we had them easy access. But here we go. All right, so first up, I, it is nice because they're summarized. Um, I guess the November 2nd, I think, is the day I heard when the final appeals will be filed by. But uh, here's the summaries, guys, just so we can break start breaking this down. All right, so this we're, we're going through Amber's, um, the appellant, right? So he this is Amber's appellant document. Uh, the trial court erred in declining to dismiss the action on the ground of forum non convenius. What does that mean? So that's Latin for inconvenient forum. And, you know, it, so what was strange about the case is that it was tried in Virginia, even though, you know, we got Johnny and Amber who were from California. Right. And so there, there was a request by Amber to saying, like, get it out of Virginia. We have no connection to that state. And the basis that Johnny sued there was that um, the uh, op-ed um, piece in, in, in the Washington Post uh, was, was the basis for these defamatory statements. And the Washington Post servers are located in the state of Virginia. And that this is where this basically emanated from and that Amber participated, obviously, in writing her own op-ed and having it published. So sh this is why Virginia was the right place to do it. Mm. Now, legally, the only reason uh, that he put that out there in Virginia is they have much um, better laws to sue for defamation than California. California, he might not have made it uh, to trial because California has this very strong anti-slap protections, and that's why he used that forum in Virginia because it's easier to sue for defamation in Virginia. Okay, so first up, just again, wrong and, venue. Not a, likely of this one being anything that could actually make a difference. Zero. Okay, so that's what we'll, we'll go through each one. We'll have him, we'll explain it, and then we'll get uh, his verse. So, so far, zero points. Let's see. Trial court erred in denying the supplemental plea in bar in ruling that November 2nd, 2020, judgment of the United Kingdom High Court of Justice, Queen's Bench Division, uh, Depp versus News Corp, uh, does not foreclose Mr. Depp's claims. So th this is a, a claim uh, that is also extremely weak, um, or really has no chance. And what she's saying here is that there was a trial in England and that Johnny lost, which should bar him or foreclose him from bringing the claim against Amber in Virginia. It's a ridiculous argument because they're two separate cases. The issues are different. And uh, so, again, no chance of succeeding. All right. That's so far too 
Two for zero oh and two. Let's see for three. The trial court er erred in denying the demur and plea in bar and in ruling as a matter of law that the three allegedly defamatory statements in the challenged op-ed are a actionable as statements of fact rather than non-actionable expressions of opinion, and b actionable as defamation by implication. So she's raising two issues here. One is is that um, hey, this was my opinion. And how can my opinion uh, about whatever I was saying in this op-ed piece be defamation? Because I'm not stating fact, I'm stating an opinion, and we all have a right to state an opinion. And, and everyone reading that op-ed would understand that I was just stating my opinion, not stating it as a fact. And there's a, there's a, you know, there's a difference between saying he is a, you know, an abuser or whatever word we want to use versus I, I felt abused in the relationship. Huh. Okay. So it's a subtle difference between saying he hit me versus I felt I was in an abusive relationship. So it's not a bad argument, but that was the whole purpose of the trial. Right. And, um, we can still get sued. We, you know, just like you on your show, you can't just say, Hey, I think, and then just totally blatantly state, false things about somebody else and, and get away with it just because you said, I think in front of every, you know, sentence it's there, there, it's not that easy to avoid. And so th this argument was made to the jury. The jury said, Hey, uh, this was a statement that we believe that was portrayed as fact that a re reasonable reader would read these statements in the op-ed and think that you were saying something actually happened and therefore you're responsible for it. So that's why she loses a B defamation by implication. What she's saying there is, Hey, you read that op-ed piece. It never mentions Johnny Depp's name. And that's true. It, you know, it says in 2016, I spoke out about an abusive relationship and I felt the wrath of Hollywood, blah, blah, blah. And so she's saying, I never, I never said his name. Well, it was by implication. Anyone knowing the facts uh, would understand that she was referring to Johnny. And she says that, you know, she can't be sued for that. And there's some First Amendment protections because he's a public figure. Again, that was a issue that was raised to the jury. It was argued and the jury considered it and rejected it. So it's not a good ground for appeal. Yeah, I mean, she's also admitted it in the trial several times that, yeah, no, I was, of course I was referring to Johnny. Uh, let's see here. So number four, the trial court erred in excluding from evidence at trial the November 2nd, 2020 judgment of the United Kingdom High Court of Justice. So basically saying they didn't let us bring the UK trial in, which they weren't supposed to, right? Does this have any legs? No. And in particular, what she's saying is not not just like testimony uh, that was given in the English trial, which I think I would be OK with uh, under some circumstances. She's saying I want Amber wanted the Virginia jury to hear what what Lord whoever said in the English court, judgment, which is is completely in, inappropriate. Uh, it is hearsay. Um, and what English judge thought about the evidence in the UK case is not admissible uh, in the Virginia case. It doesn't matter what somebody else thought. It only matters what the jury believes. So that was absolutely proper to exclude what the English judge's conclusions were. And that's what she's saying is an error on appeal. Also, zero chance of that uh, having any legs on appeal. Number five, the trial court erred in excluding from evidence a trial, A, medical records, including Ms. Hurd's contemporaneous communications with medical providers, such as Dr. Laura Anderson, Kipper, Lloyd, uh, a lot of other bank, all these doctors here, and B, Ms. Hurd's communications with several third parties, including Mr. Depp's employees and Ms. Hurd's employees, friends, family, about interactions with Mr. Depp, including reports of drug abuse, uh, sorry, drug use, aggressive and uh, abuse of conduct, physical and her fear for her safety. So basically all hearsay, correct? It's hearsay. And, and she's got this flipped. Um, you in trial, you can bring in evidence of what are called prior inconsistent statements. So if Amber's on the stand, uh, let, well, I'll just use this. If, if, if Amber's on the stand and, uh, being cross-examined, uh, she can be confronted with saying, hey, Amber, you just told us X, but you told this other witness Y. 
you told your therapist or their, your friend something completely different way back in the day than you were just telling us right now. That's a prior inconsistent statement. What she's trying to bring in in number five is a prior consistent statement saying, I told my friends, I told my therapy, uh, therapists and doctors something consistent with what I'm just saying right now. That's generally not admissible. And so that's what she's arguing is saying, well, the judge excluded all of this cumulative evidence saying, well, hey, I told this person this, I told that person that. Again, generally, that's not allowed. And um, because it's self-serving, of course, you know, it, it's not as relevant to a juror to hear that somebody said the same thing five times over because you right. could just say the same lie. If it's a lie, five times over. <laughs> saying it three times yeah. doesn't make it true. And so that's what she's basically saying, you know, uh, and and um, but certainly if you said something inconsistent, that's highly relevant. <sighs> Yeah, so, so far, five for zero for five. Uh, let's see how six fares. The trial court erred in admitting evidence at trial related to Ms. Hurd's pledge to donate money to charity and evidence related to Ms. Hurd's alleged abuse of third parties. <laughs> what evidence? What, what is this even referring to? Yeah, I don't know the second part, but certainly the pledge to charity was highly relevant to her credibility because she had said, look, I never wanted anything from Johnny and I gave all the money. I, you know, I basically Robin Hood story. I got seven million from this man in a divorce settlement and I gave it away to charity and, um, you know, to make her look good. And in fact, that was false um, or she only gave a small amount of that seven million away. So that's highly relevant to her credibility. Now, Right. I mean, couldn't you argue the same thing about the drugs that they, she kept trying to show to Johnny? Just because he does drugs or drinks doesn't mean he did the acts that she's claiming either, right? But she got to get all that. Well, yeah. And, and there is there's a, some references to that below. Now, the evidence related to abuse of third parties, my, my guess is that maybe has to do with Kate James, the assistant. Um, there was some, some testimony there in the video uh, depot about Kate having been mistreated and spat upon, maybe. I, I, I think that came out in the trial, the spat in the face. Um, it did. So, you know, look, I mean, um, there's, it, it, um, it, it, generally speaking, prior bad acts are not relevant to prove some unrelated acts. So we can't, we can't confuse the jury or prejudice the jury to saying, look at all these bad things Amber did previously and therefore you should assume that she acted bad on this one instance. That's generally not allowed because again, it would confuse and prejudice the jury into thinking once bad, always bad. And so that's what she's trying to get out to in the second point here. Um, but look, even if she, even I'll give her half a point on that one. I'll give her half a point. Oh, okay. She's on the board. Give her half a point. But even if she, even if she proves, and here's the thing about appeals, even if she proves that there, the like, okay, the testimony by Kate James should not have gotten in. That's not a reversal of the judgment. Um, Amber has to show that the erroneously admitted evidence resulted or likely resulted in this judgment and that the jury couldn't have got there through the other evidence. She will never prove that. That whatever Kate James, if that's what she's referring to, said, had really nothing to contribute towards this judgment. I mean, there was there was a mountain of other evidence that would support the correctness of that judgment, even if the admission of one or two sentences of Kate James's testimony was incorrect. Uh, so again, maybe a half point there, but it's hard to know exactly what she's referring to because it's it's so vague. The reference is so vague. All right. Well, seven. It does then goes the trial erred uh, in a court erred in, exc in excluding evidence at the trial of Mr. Depp's reputation as it existed prior to the publication of the challenged op ed and after the op ed was published. It's just weird to me because again we're arguing about the op ed and whether it was defamatory. Why would his prior stuff even matter? So that goes to damages, and what she's saying there is is oh, that okay. okay yeah. If I if I defamed him in this op ed, I didn't hurt him because everyone thought he had drug and alcohol problems or was an you know abusive person previously. So no harm, no foul is what she's saying in number seven. And 
I don't know what she's complaining about because she did get in and I was surprised. And I think the error was allowing uh, her attorney, uh, I think it was Rottenborn when he was trying to cross-examine Johnny Depp and Rottenborn uh, basically read all these headlines from blog posts and, and gossip columns the saying, you know, Johnny Depp has this issue, Johnny Depp, you know, whatever, fill in the blanks and was allowed to read that to the jury. I thought that was an error um, because these aren't vetted sources. It's just like any of us could just take create a blog post. And so she did get in that evidence. She got in right. a bunch of evidence about saying like, hey, this guy had maybe a little bit of a tarnished reputation before the op-ed piece. So she got in her evidence, whatever other stuff she wanted to do. I don't know. But, you know, that's the relevancy of it. And again, I heard I heard all that stuff being read out loud to the jury in front of uh, you know, uh, during the cross of Johnny. So she got that, she got her punch in and it didn't land. So no point there. Okay. We're st no we're still a potential half a point is all he's given so far. Uh, the trial court erred in sustaining an objection during the cross examination of Mr. Depp to a question about the truth of one of the alleged defamatory statements on the ground that it called for le a legal conclusion. You know, this is going back a while. Um, I'm, yeah, I, I don't know which one that is. So I guess yeah, the longer one may give us more information. But this is about a this is really about a specific objection, and that I guess those would be in this appeal, Doc. That's allowed. Yeah, yeah. So she can put you know fill in the blanks on that one in her appeal. But basically, what she's saying is is that there was a statement in the op-ed piece, and Johnny Depp was confronted on cross examination saying, "Isn't it true?" what Amber wrote here about you and that there was an objection saying, well, that's calling for a legal conclusion. And the judge said, yeah, I agree with that. And he doesn't have to answer it. So usually what that means is like they're asking, you know, um, and I got to be careful about how, uh, how I say this, but um, if, if there is a crime, uh, you know, that's, been committed and we we would maybe use in shorthand what that is you know whether let's say it's an assault or a battery something like that and if the op-ed said hey uh there was a battery that occurred and then um they go to on cross-examination to johnny saying hey isn't it true that you committed a battery well that is a legal conclusion that that's not you know, there's a whole bunch of elements that go into whether a battery occurred as a matter of law. So that would be a properly sustained objection. It's calling for a legal conclusion. The, the proper question would be, did you hit her? That's that's easily understood. That doesn't that's not bound up into a legal conclusion like battery. Hmm. So it'd be it would some kind of I don't know what the question was, but it would have to be a question like that that she's saying. And if it's true that it was calling for a legal conclusion, then you don't you don't the witness doesn't answer those questions. So this would be properly excluded, not a ground for an appeal. And again, how how would even if that was incorrect, how would that incorrect ruling change the sea of evidence right. how would that one drop infect now the entire ocean of evidence that was presented against her it couldn't so zero points there okay well that was gonna say, a trial court erred in allowing mr depp to ar to argue or suggest at trial that the jury could award damages based on statements or conduct occurring prior to the publication of the challenged op-ed so I don't know exactly what that argument was. Um, now, certainly that she's saying that there was some kind of argument made by Depp's team, probably in closing, uh, about conduct that Amber had engaged in prior to writing the op-ed. So maybe that was a fight in which she hit him. Maybe that was the severing of the finger. Maybe that was getting the um, the restraining order and leaking that to the press. Um, so they're raising all this stuff and somehow insinuating that all of that conduct could be considered in awarding damages against Amber for what she had wrote in her op-ed piece and that they're saying that there, there is some error there. Well, again, there's jury instructions and the jury instructions are clear as to the evidence that the court the jury can consider and what the findings it needs to make to issue an award of damages. So I really doubt that there was confusion there. 
And um, all of those other acts definitely lead up to and are directly relevant to the, either the truth or falsity of her op-ed and to her state of mind, whether she did this uh, or whether we would consider this with, with malice. So um, I would say zero point there because, cool. yeah, this not seeing that as a good ground to appeal. Just not working. All right. Number 10, the trial court erred in allowing Mr. Depp to argue is just uh, and trial the jury to consider whether the alleged defamatory statements in the challenge op-ed were republic republications of statements Ms. Heard made in 2016 in connection with a domestic v, uh, DV temporary restraining order she obtained against Mr. Depp. Yeah, this is a kind of weird one because generally speaking, you you know, if, if you go into court and make accusations in court like she did in 2016 for her uh, restraining order application, those are protected speech that you can't be sued generally for what you say in a court document. So I don't know why it would be Johnny that would be claiming that, you know, the op-ed piece was was a republication of that earlier statement. Um, but she's claiming that he made that argument. And again, it's I, I give no legs to this because the jury was carefully instructed on what its task was. And in those instructions, and we read through those, you know, it was kind of like you have to answer question one before you go to question two. And those forms made it clear that these are the statements in particular in the op-ed piece that Johnny claims are false. And the question was of the jury is, do you agree? And so there was never a question raised to the jury in any of those forms, whether it's something she said in 2016 in a restraining order application was true or false. So this is mixing apples and oranges, so zero point. Whew, another zero. All right, now number 11, the trial court, we're almost there. It's not that many, guys. The trial court, which rejected proposed jury instruction CC, improperly instructed the jury, jury on actual malice. Yeah, so I don't remember jury instructions number CC, but those jury instructions were, you know, they're, they're statements of law on what the court needs to find. And the, the definition of actual malice is, is, you know, it's well understood in the law. And it seemed to me properly stated when I looked at the jury instructions. So I, I see no chance of that one uh, succeeding. Before we go to the next one, it's like we're already 11 in. There's really no smoke and gun, no obvious thing here. I mean, in going through this, is this sort of already set the mind of the judge of like, this is ridiculous? Do, do they get upset when there's a, too many that are just like, why is this even on my docket? Yeah, or is well, standard? The, the, here's the thing is, is that um, because they haven't shown up with their appellate brief, this big old document yet, um, we don't know how many of these loser arguments are going to show up in the actual brief. And so it's smart for them to saying like, hey, let me think of every argument that I could raise and put it in Got this it. document, because if they don't, they can't raise it then in the in the brief. So here. And it's almost in random order. I, I, you know, it's it, normally you would list things in the order of importance or chances right. of success, you know, to really make a statement, especially in a case like this when we're all like reading this darn thing. Um, but, you know, this almost seems like they just. It's just random. Random or, well, they're all bad arguments so far. So maybe they're not random. All right. We got a few more. The trial court erred in denying the motions to strike and set aside the jury's verdict with regard to Mr. Depp's failure to prove publication by misheard of the statement. I spoke up against SV and faced our cult's wrath that it had changed. So they're trying to say that she didn't actually write it. Is that what I'm re getting, gathering? So the motion to strike, set aside, failure to prove publication. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess they're saying, hey, Washington Post technically published it, but um, yeah, I they, mean, were they also the kind of wrote it. She she wrote it for them, knowing that it would be published. There was also the tweet that she sent out saying, I don't remember yep. what it was essentially like, hey, look at my op ed piece. So zero. Yeah, because even I mean, we could argue then that the Adam Waldman thing of if it doesn't count with the things you say, then the things he say shouldn't count either because she, whether the ACL wrote it, ACLU wrote it or Washington post or Amber, it doesn't matter. She put her name on it at the end of the day and tweeted it out as if it were her words. It feels like this is sort of a moot argument. Number 13, the trial court erred in denying the motion to set aside the jury's verdict with regard to Mr. Depp's failure to prove, to prove that the alleged defamatory statements in that challenged op-ed each convey, conf, uh, conveyed a defamatory meaning about him by implication and that any such implication was both designed and intended by Miss Heard. 
So what she's saying is here is that after the jury, you know, deliberated and reached his decision that the judge should have thrown the verdict out because there was no evidence to support it. Again, that that's a that's a ridiculous argument. There was plenty of evidence. And, you know, so the court properly maintained the verdict. There was no basis to throw it out. Hmm. All right, so we're 13. We have a half a point that he begrudgingly gave out of 13 so far. We got three more. Let's see. Trial court erred in denying the motions to strike and to set aside the jury's verdict with regard to Mr. Depp's failure to prove actual malice by clear and convincing evidence. So all of these here are now saying after the court, uh, I'm sorry, after the jury rendered its verdict, uh, Amber's team made a motion to throw out the verdict uh, asking the judge to, you know, rule that there was insufficient evidence to support that verdict. And she's now challenging that decision, saying the judge should have thrown it out. Again, no way, because most of these yeah, are based factual on what? issues that were properly determined by the court. You're um, right. And that's basically all of these are that denying the motion to set aside the jury's verdict and ruling that the jury's verdict in favor, uh, in favor of uh, on claims were not inherently or inherent in, 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 in considerably uh, inconsistent. And then again, trial court denied the motion to set aside the jury's verdict and upholding the amount of the jury's damages award in light failure for damage. Yada, yada, yada. All this is just basically saying we, the judge didn't throw out our motions and agreed with the jury. So therefore we are appealing. Well, how is this even allowed in the document? Yeah. I mean, these are probably more boilerplate type of stuff is just saying, you know, she's challenging what the jury did. And then uh, she filed a motion to set aside the jury verdict, and she's now challenging the judge's denial of that. So again, it's just a repetition of these earlier arguments just for purposes of preserving them on appeal, but they're, they don't raise any new arguments. Um, they're just really uh, attacking it in a different way. So again, we're still at zero in my book. Well, and that's it. That was, it's only the three pages. Uh, so Amber got zero to a half if we're being generous on uh, this document here. So yeah, overall, you feel the same. I mean, this there's nothing else she can now put out there. These are her arguments on the appeal, correct? I mean, there's no other thing waiting in the wings that she's stumbled upon. In your experience, this she does not have a shot in hell at winning this. Well, that's right. And that's true of most appeals. And we got to remember is that an appeal is not a redo. It's not a retrial. The appellate court doesn't listen to the evidence and saying, wow, I really believe you, Amber, or I believe you, Johnny. It's the only question is whether errors were made by the the um, the jury or the judge such that it resulted in a miscarriage of justice. So that it's it's almost for any appeal, I would say, you know, the chances of winning it are extraordinarily low. Okay, so let's give the same point system and be a, just as equally fair to Johnny. Johnny's assignments of error are also here, thanks to Andrea. Uh, here we go uh, for just as Johnny's now uh, and going through his, starting with his point, the trial court erred by denying Mr. Depp's motion for summary judgment uh, da, 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 as to Amber to uh, motion to strike the evidence as to Mr. Hurd's counterclaim. And then it gets into some, let's, I guess let's do A. Mr. Waldman is an independent contractor, not an employee agent. And Mr. Depp, is not liable for Mr. Waldman's allegedly tortoise conduct conduct as a matter of law. Thoughts on that? Sure. So what what Johnny's team is saying here is that before trial happened, that he tried to get Amber's claim or counterclaim thrown out on what's called a motion for summary judgment, which requires um, that Johnny establish that there's no factual dispute here and that he wins as a matter of law. And so what Johnny would have argued in this motion for summary judgment, again, before trial is that, hey, Waldman was not my employee. He was an independent contractor, which is true of pretty much every attorney client relationship. You don't they're not your full-time employees. You just have a contract with them to provide services. And therefore, um, Johnny is not responsible for Waldman's actions as a matter of law. Now, I, I think that that is an untrue statement as a matter of law. You can be true. You can be uh, liable for the actions of your independent contractor under some circumstances, not, not under most, but under some circumstances. Like if you you hire like like a hitman, right? I mean, he's an independent contractor. Like you you hire yeah. a hitman, you can't just say, "Well, you know, technically, I didn't give him a W two. He wasn't, you know, wasn't on the payroll." <laughs> oh, come on, 
No, yeah, that's pretty stupid. Uh, all right, so statements uh, by non-party Adam Waldman that are subject of Miss Heard's counterclaim are not actionable statements sufficient to support a claim for defamation. Yeah, so again, this is part of the uh, motion for summary judgment, which is is not easy to challenge on appeal. So basically saying like, hey, as a matter of law, whatever Waldman told, um, you know, reporters or, or stated, even if it were, you know, proven that, that Waldman made these statements on behalf of Johnny, that they're not defamatory. And that, that can't be true either because, you know, um, if the statements were false, then then they would be defamatory. Um, he you know he was saying that that Amber uh, released a statement that the jury found to be false is that Amber and others had staged the apartment um, to make it look like there was an incident there, and that um, to falsely accuse Johnny of of what they claim. And so you know okay well if that were an untrue statement that would result in defamation. So again, it, it, it was enough evidence for Amber to get to trial. And that's really what the purpose of the motion for summary judgment was to test is saying is that, you know, is there enough evidence here to get to trial on the counterclaim? And the judge correctly ruled. It was like, well, it's a factual issue whether she staged this um, scene or not. Uh, was for the jury to determine and whether Waldman had a reasonable belief in the truth of his statements when he made it are, re are questions of fact for the jury to determine. So it was proper for the court to deny the motion for summary judgment and allow Amber to at least get to trial and have the jury determine that. And then this third part, Miss Heard failed to present any clear and convincing evidence that Mr. Waldman made the counterclaim with malice. I mean, that's that feels valid. I did I? I yeah. So again, you know, it, it's hard because the the way that they're they're presenting this is not the question of whether, unless I'm misreading it, but it's not the question of whether she proved malice at trial. It's whether uh, her statement of claim before trial uh, was sufficient to make out a, a reasonable enough case to get to trial. And and the judge said, well, yeah, you, you, you made out a reasonable enough case to get to a jury and it's for a jury to determine that. Now, I do have issues with what the jury did um, on the Waldman statements and maybe below they're going to attach that. But right now on point one A through C, it's all about this pretrial motion, which, again, has they have no chance of of winning uh, or overturning the ruling on a pretrial motion. It's just I got to give them a zero on all that. Okay, uh, and then we get into preserved plaintiff's memor uh, memoranda to sustain demur plea and bar to all counterclaims, which motion the parties argued before the trial and court and trial court denied uh, with respect to three statements that ultimately form the basis for the counterclaim at trial. Plaintiff's memoranda in support of motion for summary judgment uh, regarding counterclaim, which motion the parties argued in trial court denied on March 24th as further reflected in the trial's court order. Plaintiffs mend a random in support of motion to strike, which motion the trial doc, the trial court denied after argument on May 24. That's a lot to get through. It's yeah, the same, just, same they're ideas. They're just going through the history. They're just going through the history of what it and is. And none of this is going to, you think, play into anything? No, 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 because it's all pretrial rulings that, that the appellate court's not hmm. going to get involved in. It, it, she had a right to get to trial on her claims. And so the Court of Appeal is not going to say that she had no right to get to trial on him. I mean, she did. It's interesting. They're, now, they're running out of space on this form, and they've wasted a lot on that pretrial stuff. Here we go. The trial court erred in refusing Mr. Depp's proposed jury instruction numbers 22, 23, and 24 as to whether Mr. Waldman was acting as an independent contractor when he made the counterclaim statements. Uh, counterclaim are not actionable statements sufficient to support a claim for defamation. Uh, so I think you've got to go down below to page 3. And it may be yeah, on that's three. tweet page. Oh, oh, sorry. I thought I grabbed three, but I guess I didn't. Hold on. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. A counterclaim preserved Mr. Depp's proposed jury instructions, numbers 20 to 24, which the trial court denied. Yeah, so I'd have to look back through that to see exactly what those proposed jury instructions said. But what he's getting at here is saying is that the jury, that, that, that Depp wanted the jury to be instructed on legally what an independent contractor, you know, is. 
and that the judge rejected some of those instructions and gave different instructions as to the definition of an independent contractor. And he's raising that on appeal. So again, you know, I, 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 I haven't looked at it. I haven't looked at it. So with that qualification, but this was a good judge. This was a very smart judge. So I got to think that um, she correctly stated the law as to what an independent contractor was to the jury. And again, it's not that complicated of a definition. So I got to think that this judge would not have made a legal mistake on the definition of an independent contractor. And sure, they're preserving this for appeal, but I, I don't give it legs. Here, I have the instructions. Uh, thank you, Claire. Hold on. Uh, save. Save as. Uh, sorry. Choose. That works for me. My computer. There we go. Uh, yes. And, oh, I actually had them already from previous rulings. Uh, oh, it's a lot. Sorry, I have to go through. Yeah, I mean, this might be too hard to do. So it was proposed jury instructions 22 through 24 is what they're arguing. Yeah. And these may be as given and not the include the proposed. So we'd have to see um, if you go to around oh, really 20, um, there may be one on they're what she actually the instructed the jury on what an independent contractor is. So we may get it there. Burden of, okay, proof, yeah, burden and of agency. proof of agency. So here, if you go back to that one. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So, so this is what the jury was actually instructed. Number 20. Now 22, 23 and 24 Depp asked for, but they were excluded. So that's why they're not on the list. So if you go back oh, to 20, okay. so th this is what the jury heard, not what they didn't hear. The appeals about what they didn't hear, but what the Got jury it. was told is that Amber Heard has the burden of proving, um, that Waldman, was an agent of Depp and acting within the course and scope of his agency when they made the statements. That's an absolutely correct and simple statement of law. Whatever Depp would have asked on top of that, I don't know how that would have changed that. It's so simple. It's saying it's like Amber Heard has to prove that Waldman was working for Depp when he made the statements and that Waldman was acting within the course and scope of his agency or employment when he made the statements. That is, that's the law. You could say it five different ways. It doesn't change the meaning of that eloquent, concise statement. So I'm going to say with that, with taking the risk without even seeing those other instructions, come on, you, you don't get any better than this. You've got to state the law in layman's terms for the jury to understand stating it three or four different ways. Doesn't, isn't going to change that. That is, the, that is the law. Her burden to prove those two elements, and the jury said she did. I really get this vibe that uh, they just don't want to defend Adam Waldman. I don't know. It just it just really seems seems well, like there was a lot more there that's there. Oh, let's do the third one. We'll come back to it because here's okay, the last yeah. one. The trial court erred in excluding from evidence the full unredacted versions of Mr. Depp's exhibit notes. Uh, which are copies of the news articles in which the counter state uh, appeared instead admitting only redacted versions that shows the counterclaim statements out of context, um, da, 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 which plaintiff yeah. argued should be admitted in its entirety. So, you know, I'm not familiar with those redactions, but that, uh, you know, that, that seems to be seems a like a, the best one out of all of them, right? Yeah. That seems like a decent argument. Again, it would depend on what the redacted stuff is, but to me, it's like context matters. I mean, you, it, the, 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 there's really no statement that you should be reviewing, um, as to whether it's defamatory without the context in which it was stated and to redact or to you know, black out a whole bunch of portions of it as they're claiming happened here would remove potential context. Now, again, this judge is smart. The, this was a excellent trial judge who ruled on this. So she, I doubt that she would have said like, oh, let me remove a whole bunch of matter here from these articles so I could screw Johnny Depp. I don't buy that. Um, so my guess is, and it, it's only a guess is that whatever she took out had absolutely nothing to do with the statements did not provide context and would have confused or maybe been prejudicial to either or both parties. And that's why it was taken out. So 
again, it, 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 it sounds good, you know, oh my God, you got to see the whole thing. But again, we're talking about a judge who was excellent and knew what she was doing. So I got to say that even if we looked at these redacted versions here, that the Court of Appeal is not going to get excited about this. And it would be Johnny's burden to saying, to convince the Court of Appeal not only was an error to redact, but that had the jury seen those redacted um, pieces of the stories that it would have likely ruled in Johnny's favor. That is an almost impossible burden to meet. Um, and, and again, I do have issues with, with the verdict against Johnny, um, but that, that's not, that would not be one of them. Interesting. Okay, so we've we've put them all together. Now we've seen Johnny's. We've seen. So do you give him a point on at least the last one potentially, or a half? Does he get a half a point as well, or no points? I, I'm I'm not giving him a point because again, I, I could look at it, and but the thing is, is that uh, I, I'm not giving a point on it because knowing that the judge was excellent, she would not have removed items from the articles that would have been necessary to assess the context of the statements. And again, I'm making a big assumption there, but just having watched that entire trial and knowing, you know, other rulings that the court had made, I don't buy that she made it. She would have made an error of that magnitude because that would be a really, really big screw up. Um, so I'm not, I'm just not buying it. Maybe he's got a point, but I'm not buying it. Interesting. All right. So at the end of the day, you gave Amber half a point, maybe, and Johnny got zero. So at the end of the day, uh, when we put both of these appeal documents, just their very rough uh, outlines up to snuff, it sounds like you're not feeling confident in either of them winning this appeal, which just means that Johnny still wins. Ultimately, Amber will not get the chance to file her appeal, but Johnny also will not get the chance to file the appeal against the one claim that she did win. Yeah, appeals are mostly denied. You're talking, you know, probably 90 something percent of these things are, 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 are failures. So it's um, and the only reason why I think Johnny appealed is because he owes her two million dollars under the verdict and she owes him ten point three five million. If he had not appealed, uh, then she would be able to collect the two million uh, from him. And so he'd be paying her $2 million and he would be waiting, you know, potentially two years for this appeal process to be done to get the 10.35 from her. So I think he just did that defensively and he's raising whatever arguments he can to keep the thing alive in good faith to make the appeal. But again, the, the Waldman thing, you know, it, it's, it was very odd listening to that trial um, knowing that there was this counterclaim, a big counterclaim that Amber had made against Johnny for the Waldman statements, but I heard very little about that in Johnny's defense. And I, I was surprised by that because it's like, Johnny's not responsible for everything that comes out of Waldman's mouth. It's not, Johnny didn't say these things. Waldman said these things. And who's to say that, that Johnny authorized, approved, consented, wanted Waldman to make any of those statements? It was not, um, it was just to completely silence about most of that stuff. And I think the jury is just like, well, hey, I mean, Amber's making a claim. There wasn't really a whole lot of defense about it. And so they went for it. And so I don't know what the mindset was there of Johnny's team, but I was surprised that they didn't put up a strong defense on the Waldman yeah. statements. Um, and, but, you know, hey, whatever. What an amazing show. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's had so much fun. My gosh, thank you to Christopher Melcher for those amazing legal breakdowns. We had so much more conversation, including about the new Angelina Jolie leaked email and more, as well as some of those new uh, judgments that came out for the Parkland person and more. I was so grateful to talk to it with Steph, the Alter Nerd, Lewis Lecko of Nerd Report. Go support and subscribe to them. In fact, subscribe to all of us. Check that you're subscribed right now. Hit that button. Hit that bell for all alerts. Smash that like button. Leave a comment down below what your favorite part was as well. If you want to watch the replay, the full over three hours and 40 minutes, hit that join button. Become a member, pick a tier uh, level, and you'll be supporting not only our show, but our whole channel. Uh, and I appreciate you guys who do that. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be back more. Again, thanks to Steph. Thanks to Lewis. Thanks to Christopher Melcher. And thanks to all of you. Can't wait to see you guys. Hopefully, I, I think we'll be back tomorrow. Sometimes on Fridays, I'm iffy. But stay tuned. Depending on the news, we'll be here. And we'll definitely be back Monday. Have a great one, everybody. See you guys later. Bye. Bye. Laters. <laughs>